PostQM was building them as part of the Xen build. So that uh, as output, you have a working system with QMO binaries, and when you install it, you can actually start HUM guest. Similar concept is CBIOS. CBIOS is an in guest BIOS that is used together with QMO Xen, so it's virtual firmware. And it's also cloned from an external repository and built as part of the Xen Unstable build. Uh, again, another example is OVMF. OVMF is the virtual EFI firmware for HVM guests. It's optional and is also maintained as a third party repository and so on and so forth. Um, and then there is the world of stat domains. So, stat domains are uh, small utility domains which provide services to guests. The best example is probably QMU stat domains. So, QMU runs in a st one instance of QMU runs in one stat domain to do, to do device emulation for one guest for security purposes. So in order to build a QMU stat domain, you need to clone and fetch QMU, clone and fetch MinUS, that is a library kernel, build them all together against a uh, new lib, uh, the new, uh, that is a libc, you glue it all, and you get a stat domain kernel. So it's, uh, it's not simple, uh, and uh, the current build system, to be honest, is pretty bad. Is capable of building star domains, but, but just. Um, so what I'm trying to say here is that basically Xenon Stable is a bit of a big cauldron that tries to be everything to everybody and not succeeding at either of the goals it's set for itself. Um, so if you are so if you are a distro packager, for example, the maintainer of the Xen package in Debian or Ubuntu. Um, you certainly are not happy with Xen Unstable going and cloning QEMU using Git as part of the Xen build. You will be horrified by that because you already have a fully working build system that builds QEMU separately to build a QEMU dev package for Ubuntu. Uh, you know, you don't really want to slow down an Ubuntu build by going and cloning a, a third party uh, component from a third party repository, right? It's, it's pretty bad. So as a distro packager, the first thing you're going to do is disable all the third party build, right? Through command line option to, to the make system, through patches, but this is the re really the first thing you're, you're doing, right? Uh, so from a distro packager point of view, or even an enterprise product builder, I know there's a some server guy in Citrix are in the same camp. They're not really happy with, with, with the situation. So you would like the Xenon stable repository to be as lightweight as possible. Ideally, maybe we're containing just Xen hypervisor code. Maybe, yes, some of the libraries, but certainly no, certainly no third party builds. But on the other hand, let's put ourselves in the shoes of somebody that want to try Xen. Somebody maybe, you know, they want to just install Xen from sources because likes to be on top of things, like to try the very latest. So if you want to build Xen from source and, and you're just a, an end user, you don't have your own build system set up. And uh, I mean, ideally, you would want to just do configure, make, mix, install, and have everything ready. You certainly don't want to go and have to fetch manually QMU, two version of it, uh, clone CBIOS and build it, clone VMF all by hand. It would be a nightmare, right? So what we have here, it's, it's clear, we have conflicting requirements, right? It's a typical case of it, actually. So on one end, people want to get rid of more and more stuff from Xenon Stable, and on the other end, people will put more and more stuff into it, right? So I think the best example is uh, pvgrub2. So um, pvgrub is like a special build of grub that uh, runs as firmware for, well, as bootloader for PV guests. In tree, in Xenon Stable, we, we have pvgrub1. And uh, it basically requires a few patches, and building against MinUS is a bit complex, but what works. Um, meanwhile, the upstream Grub community actually implemented PV support in Tree. So now if you clone Grub from upstream, you get the latest Grub with Zen support. Awesome, right? Except that most distros don't really enable Zen support in the Grub build. So I thought, well, we have already PV Grub 1 in Tree. Let's start PV Grub 2. I do that, and the Xen maintainer screams my team, right? Why? Why is that unhappy? Because this is yet another third-party component to clone and build. That will slow down yet again the Xen unstable build. So how, how do we solve this situation, right? As an end user, you would love to have 
PV grab to ready, right? After doing configure make mix install, you would like to have it just there so you can use it. So I thought, let's look at other projects that have similar issues. It might not be the first one that comes, uh, you know, comes up, right? Many projects have several different components that you need to build and uh, put together in order to have a fully working system. So I started to think about which one uh, are, are around that are pretty famous and with a similar, with a similar issue, and I thought of OpenStack. As most of you know, OpenStack is, you know, it has a complex architecture. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I, yeah, when, when I look at this, I think that actually XM product is pretty simple, right? <laughs> Our life is pretty damn easy, right? Anyway, so how do, how do the OpenStack people keep it together? Well, the OpenStack people have DevStack. Like, so DevStack is a set of bash scripts that clones all the Git repositories you need, builds them, and installs them for you, configures the system. So it's basically it's one script you need to execute, and that's it. You're gonna wait a long time, but then when you come back to your computer, everything is ready to be run. There is no additional step, nothing. It just works. In fact, it goes to the extent of installing build dependency for you. <coughs> uh, so you don't have to make sure that your build essential is installed in your system or anything. So just take care of everything, everything from A to Z. Um, so the thing about DevStack is that uh, one of the core goals is to be easy to read, so that you can, uh, it can, it can basically act as documentation uh, or, or best example on how to deploy an OpenStack system. And finally, uh, what I think is key is that DevStack is the tool that is used in the OpenStack CI loop to deploy test machine. So you can be certain that DevStack is the most tested OpenStack configuration, because it's the one that test that is used for every single OpenStack commit. So I thought, this is what we're missing, right? We are missing DevStack. So Raisin tried to be DevStack for Zen. So why Raisin? So Raisin is a game word that stands for Raise Zen. So Ian Campbell came up with the name, so all the gratitude and the blame to him, right? I take no credit. <laughs> so what's Raisin? So Raisin, like DevStack, is a set of bash scripts that take care of cloning all the repositories from source, building everything you need to set up a fully working Zen system, installing it, and configuring it for you. So raising, like DevStack, is very simple to use. So it's basically with one command, you get everything up and running. And also wants to act as documentation and is really easy to, to, to read. And also pretty much componentized. So that means it's, it's very easy to add one more component to build. They're all clearly separate out. Xen and Libvirt and all the other components are, uh, that, that Raisin today supports. So how does Raisin solve the original problem I just described? Well, on one end, with Raisin, if we rely on it to uh, build a fully working Xen system, then we can remove all the third party clone and builds from Xen Unstable, making all the uh, distro packagers and enterprise product builders happy. But on the other end, we still have a vehicle to, uh, something to give users to, to, to set up the system with one button, right? So, so an end you actually is better than today, because today the build system is not that flexible, it's not that powerful, it's not easy to say, I want a newer QM with an older Xen or vice versa. Uh, the start domain view system is much worse. So it would be nice to have something that let you, that give you this level of freedom and flexibility uh, to users, and also to developers. So when we have interns, usually one of the big issues is to explain them how to set up a Xen dev environment, right? So with Raisin, uh, this should be really trivial, because Raisin set up a dev environment for you, because cloning all the Git trees basically give you exactly what you need if you want to start hacking on Xen project. Right, so how does Raisin work? Uh, so Raisin is based on a config file, uh, default config files are, pr are provided and they're, you know, fully working. Um, what's in the config file? Well, there is a set of uh, variables that control the build, that is the make, prefix, and best tier, that's obvious. More interesting is the enable component variable. So that contains a list of components that are enabled in the build. So by default, CBIOS, OVMF, Xen, QEMU, that is upstream QEMU, QEMU traditional, that is the old fork, 
grab, that is upstream grab, and libvirt are all enabled. Then you have one URL variable for each of these components to specify the git URL to clone. So for example, if you have your own, uh, if you have your own mirror, you can specify it here. Um, and then there is one revision variable for each of these components. So the revision can be anything that Git understands. So it could be a tag, uh, it could be a commit ID, it could be a branch name, anything that Git can basically check out. Um, so how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple. As I said, the goal is to be extremely easy to use. So uh, the basic is that, is that you just run raise build. And raising is going to go and fetch all the Git trees, build them, and create a deb on an RPM package for you with all the binaries. So the deb, the deb and RPM packages are not really smart. They don't have the proper dependency setup or anything. They're just a tool to be able to afterwards uninstall them if you want to. It's just a bit more than a tarball. Um, raise install installs the package. And raise configure configures the system. At the moment, raise configure is pretty trivial. So the only thing it does basically is setting up the bridge for Zen, so the XenBR0 bridge. But the raise build command is, I think, is what the real value of raising is. Because this is what goes and clones everything you need, builds, and, 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 and set up a pretty convenient deb that you can copy around, or an RPM that you can move around. Um, yeah, so this is, about, this, is, this is enough about the build. Uh, and let me talk about tests for a moment. Um, so there are two kinds of tests. Well, yeah, very high at, a, at a very high level, there are two kinds of tests. <laughs> the uh, unit and functional test on one side and CI loop test on the other side. So in same project, we have OSS test that runs a CI loop uh, the test all patches before they go to master. So a CI loop test, well, the CI loop tests tend to be comprehensive. They try to test all possible configurations, all possible guests, uh, in order to try to find any possible regression introduced by changes. So usually they tend to be pretty large and pretty slow. So to, to run a full uh, OSS test, set of tests, it takes hours. And as a matter of fact, we are now thinking of introducing a smaller set of tests that is run regularly, more often, than the full set of tests because they eat too much resources in the colo, right? So, so basically, the CI loop is low. Also, the CI loop tend to be somehow tied to your infrastructure, right? So OSS test specifically knows about the machines you have to run tests, is able to allocate machine, is able to free up machines. It does some kind of hook in, into your DHCP server, and it needs, at the very least, two nodes to run, one that is called the controller node, and one that is actually the test machine. So it's complex. Um, on the other hand, unit and functional tests are usually really small, simple scripts that test one functionality or one unit of software to check for, for very simple regression. It's a simple sanity ch uh, check. Uh, they usually are single host, and they usually are able to be run on any machine, so that you can run it on your dev box, on your test box, and on anything, really. And they complete in minutes, not hours. So how do we stand in some project in regarding these two high-level areas of testing? So as I said, we have voice as test on one end, and uh, we have nothing on the other end. So, right, so we have nothing that we can point contributors to to say, please run this set of simple tests before submitting patches. You're breaking everything, right? You, we cannot really say this. Actually, we had contributors coming to us and saying, do you have a set of tests we could run to figure out if we broke anything? I said, no, not really. All right, so it's, it's pretty bad. Um, so one of the issues though, is that we didn't have a place to put these tests. So if you put these tests on GitHub somewhere, nobody's going to ever check <coughs> them out. So if you put them in Xen Unstable, you have the Xen maintainers screaming at you even harder. Uh, but now we have a place where we can have simple tests that is raising. So I understand that actually testing and building are not entirely similar things. But the infrastructure in terms of scripting and, and things that need to run are very similar. 
so adding test to raising was actually pretty simple. Set of scripts that can be run on the same machine you built and install and, and, and test and that terminate in minutes and uh, they just use busybox static to set up your guest. Because the idea is not to test all version of Windows, all version of Linux, it's just to test the VM still run, right? That you can still create guests. Very simple smoke tests. So yes, I added this raise test functionality. Uh, again, as I said, is, is based on busybox static, so there are basically no dependencies. You need nothing. Uh, busybox static is available on both Ubuntu, Debian, distros, and also on CentOS and Fedora. Um, so it can run anywhere. Uh, they are stackable, meaning that uh, they are stackable, meaning that you can exploit the setup for a test by, uh, done by one of the script in another script. So that makes it very flexible. Obviously, there's going to be a script to set up your VM to be able to check out whether I've been created. And this setup can be reused in the live migration test uh, so that you don't need to copy and paste all the VM creation code everywhere. OK, so what's the status of Raisin? So the, the build, install, and configure functionalities are pretty much complete. When I mean complete, I, by far I don't mean that there is no, mar, no more work to be done, but I mean that the main functionality work. Uh, you can try them out and they should work. Um, the default active components are the one I said before, so CBIOS, so VMF, so the, the virtual guest firmware, Xen, QEMU, QEMU traditional, that are the two QEMUs, Grub, that is an upstream Grub tree, and Livert. We have a few stackable tests, so the, st the test is more immature, we only have a couple of tests and I would definitely like to see more coming in the, ne in the next release cycle. And the integration with OSS test is still in progress. Um, so uh, uh, how do I see the future of Raisin? Um, so I think integration with OSS test, is, OSS test is really important. So similarly to dev, st to dev stack and open stack, the key here is that dev stack is very well tested because it's what is used in the CI loop. So I would like to see raising be used by the CI loop in Zen project to set up the test machines. In addition, the fact that we have tests in raising, it doesn't mean that you cannot exploit the same test in OSS test, because you can have OSS test as part of the CI loop just call raise test to check whether everything is still working. So you not only provide contributors for a way to check that their patches don't break major functionalities, but you also can use the same test in OSS test to, to check for regressions. Also, what I would like to see soon is remove QEMU, CBIOS, OVMF, all the external Git cloning from Xenon Stable, so that finally distro packages are happy and can remove their workarounds. Uh, it's going to take some time to do this, obviously, because uh, people can still rely on it. So it's going to take, I think, a, at least a couple of release cycles one to give the heads up, and the other one to actually remove the external cloning. Um, and, the, and then I would like to see Raising becoming the, the, the way to set up a fully working Zen system. Uh, so I, I don't actually see um, distro packagers to use Raising for their own packaging needs. Uh, it's more like a tool for end users and for, for developers. Thing is, distro packages or enterprise products, they already have their own fully working build system that is capable of figuring out dependencies and how to pull more components together. So I think for them, it's going to be more useful as a reference uh, implementation, as a reference set of, uh, as a reference way of building and setting up your system. So uh, the repository is available there. So it's uh, uh, hosted on, on Xenbit, along the other, uh, raising.git. Uh, we have a comprehensive readme file that actually explain uh, what all the components are, how do they interact with each other, and uh, what is the uh, maintained interface between this component. When I mean component, I mean the script that is only, knows only about Zen or the script that knows only about QM, right? So the interface between the, the component and the rest of Raisin is very well documented and stable. And we have a mailing list that is Xendibel that can be used for Raisin development. All right, and that's it. You have any questions? So 
so that's a good question. Um, so uh, initially, my goal was to be able to build uh, Xen, QM, and all these third-party to uh, um, tools. I also definitely think, uh, think we need to build stat domains uh, in, uh, in Raisin. Well, at the very least, we need not to build stat domains in Xenon stable, right? <laughs> um, Pulling a, an entire DOM0 distro together is theoretically possible, and as a matter of fact, I added a Linux component already. Uh, I think it's useful because you, you might want to, because you can provide a default minimal DOMU configuration on both ARM and x86, and I think that's very useful. Or you can also use it to build your, your DOM0. Uh, it's not enabled by default, but it's there. So the kernel can be already built by, uh, by Raisin. Pulling an entire distro together via Raisin, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think if we do that, it, it would need to be very minimal. Otherwise, we get into the business of all the other uh, distro building uh, tools for embedded environments, like yeah, like the one for UCDPC and all the others. So I, that's a, they become pretty com like build root, all those stuff. I, I think they become pretty complex. I'm not sure if if, if the trade-off is worth it. But it, something very, very simple, maybe just based on uh, systemd or busybox and nothing else, I think that's conceivable it could be useful. Other questions? How exactly do you foresee this integrating with the um, uh, work that? Yes, that, that's, a good, that's a good question. Um, so I haven't spoken with them yet to be honest. Um, so on one end, I, I, uh, I kind of see that it will make sense to build a, a stat domain. So I think if we have anything uh, regarding unikernel, the first use case should be stat domains. Um, because they are very important for, 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 for Xen systems. And this is what actually today Xen Unstable build. So I think that's my top priority. And to build uh, QM stat domains, I think it will make sense to build them in, in Raisin. That would be like a good fit. That said, I also know that the RAM kernel people are actually uh, working hard to improve their own build system. Uh, and certainly, I, mean, I don't want duplication of effort, so I have to look on how, the best, uh, how to best integrate the two. But um, I think Raisin will have to be the one that give you the QM binary. Whether then Raisin uses the RAM kernel build system, that's entirely possible and can actually work well. Uh, but I think I would like Raisin to be the place where the end user that doesn't know much, aside from typing, configure, make, make, install, this kind of end user, I would like this kind of user being able to go to Raisin and get everything out of it. How it's done is, is less important to me. Uh, so we, maybe we'll be able to build QM stat domains entirely based on the RAM kernel, uh, unikernel build system. Wait, other questions? All right, and thank you.